Okay. And uh, Chancellor John has read your financial stability report. That's me. You know, the, the, one, the one you have you sent an email in as well? Have you? you produced in October, which is excellent. And I note that in 2002, lending and consumer deposits were in balance, but in 2008, lending exceeded deposits by over 700 billion pounds. How did we get so much out of kilter? And what's the future now in terms of lending and uh, deposits? Well, the banking system borrowed more through wholesale funding in order to expand its lending. And it believed that it was profitable to do so, that it could finance the cost of borrowing by earning suitably adequate returns on the lending that it was taking. Um, and that strategy seemed to be quite profitable until August 2007, when the risks involved in borrowing very short term to lend what perhaps was thought to be short term through securitized instruments, but turned out to be lending long term when the securitized mortgage market closed, that turned out to be rather risky. Now, as for the future, the banks will need to regenerate new sources of funding. The level of savings will be there. Uh, indeed, one would expect that in the next year or two, the domestic economy will be saving more as a fraction of GDP than it has in recent years. So I've no doubt that the savings pool is there. And one of the aims of the Guarantee Borrowing Programme is to give banks a start in terms of obtaining guarantee borrowing to start funding lending to the real economy by looking to those sections of the non-bank financial economy mm. and the non-financial sector from which it was not obtaining funds before. Yeah, but Lord Turner, in retrospect, that seems a no-brainer, you know, getting out of kilter so much as £700 billion. Pounds. What's going to happen in the future then? Do you think it will well, be more in balance? Well, I think it is exactly the sort of issue that needs to be looked at in uh, far greater uh, attention in future by regulators, uh, by central banks, by governments throughout the world to, to do this sort of macro analysis. I think if I pick up the question earlier of uh, admitting uh, you know, errors where they occurred, I think the FSA has admitted two areas, errors. It has admitted errors in relation to... The, well, the, the past with the FSA, no, no, but, but just but, look but, the but, future, because so, we need precise oh, answers oh, oh, here. What, what is going right, to happen? Yeah. Well, I think there is going to be some sort of process of rebalancing, because let's yeah. be clear that part of that money, that imbalance, part was coming from wholesale borrowing within the UK, part was, was the flip side of the current account uh, deficit. And some of it was effectively coming from purchases by, for instance, American money market funds of uh, retail mortgage-backed securities from uh, the UK. Uh, the fundamental problem that went wrong there was not actually a problem of bad assets. It is probably the case that large numbers of these retail mortgage-backed securities w will pay off on time, as, as it says on the paper. The fundamental reason was that the underlying investors, American money market funds, were doing maturity transformation. They were, uh, okay. they were investing in long-term assets with short-term liabilities, and they are no longer willing to do that. Okay, big question. John, 